Good settle visiting with uh, candidate Andrea Somerville. She is our current mayor, but running a re-election campaign. As we get ready for the general election coming up tomorrow, we continue our conversation this morning. So how would you kind of assess how things have gone from a candidacy standpoint here in 2018? Well, I think uh, for my re-election campaign, it has been, it's been a busy election season. Um, it's, it's been jam-packed. I think uh, it's, it's going to be a good race all the way to the end. Um, yeah. Tight race. Are there, let me ask you this, are there parts of this do you feel like you have a stronger position on than your opponent at this point in time? I guess, what, what, what do you feel differentiates you from your opponent? So I think there's a couple of big things. Um, the, the first is my push on infrastructure for the city. So I, I really am standing by my plan to push infrastructure improvements across the city. The first piece of that was a part of the six penny approval, getting the streets and stuff on there, which was successful. And now we have to keep that going. So we need to make improvements in West Laramie and the West Side. We need to deal with drainage issues. We need to deal with street issues across the city. Uh, so that's a pretty big push of mine. Um, also, I, I think experience is a big factor here. I have spent quite a bit of time uh, advocating for the city over at the state level, bringing back funding, grant money, work with the feds to open up some grants and things along those lines. So I think experience plays a factor as well. Well, it's been a, an interesting time in your tenure because it's kind of gone from where we've had some better funding to it's dwindled in the last couple of years. How would you characterize your time as mayor here in the last couple? Well, I think that uh, nobody goes into council thinking that they're going to have to sit sit late nights crammed trying to find money everywhere. And so it's been an interesting challenge. Um, and, and I hope that the citizens feel like I've done a, a good job and that I've represented Laramie well. Um, I think that maybe where I came into council thinking we were going to do more infrastructure and parks and stuff uh, improvements right away when we had a better financial outlook. Uh, I think it's changed maybe what I initially would have done because we ended up in such a poor fiscal position. Frankly, it turned out to be all hands on deck. We need to we need to improve the city's fiscal position. And so that's become the priority over the last two years, which is why I've spent so much time in Cheyenne. That's why um, you know, I've worked with our federal delegation on opening up some of those grants that we were actually able to apply for this year. Uh, that that's become the issue the last two years. Yeah, certainly uh, the, the budget crunch, I think, has uh, hit, hit Laramie a little bit more than yeah. people may realize at times. You know, everybody wants to, well, why can't I have this? Why can't I have this? Well, we just don't have the money right. at this point in time, and you guys have had to, to realize that from a city council standpoint. You talk about infrastructure. Where do you feel the biggest issue is? Is it business? Is it roads? Is it all of the above? I mean, are there other pieces to this? What, what would you put your finger on as your number one priority? Then? So the, the number one priority I have is really improving uh, the system that we have. Our street system is in pretty poor condition. And I think uh, residents see that every day when they're out driving, whether it's on Ivinson or I can think of a handful of other streets that are literally falling apart and we've just not had the money to put put those repairs in place. But secondary to that, uh, we need to talk about how to bring businesses in. We need to talk about how to keep housing development continuing to grow. And all of that comes back to infrastructure. We, the city needs to be able to have a plan to be able to extend that infrastructure. So the first problem is how do you take care of your maintenance issues on your street system so that it, you bring the quality up a little bit. And hopefully we've got a better handle on that now with the six penny money. So now the focus is going to be how do we deal with the necessary infrastructure to expand our business opportunities. So first we need to look at downtown and make sure that we have adequate infrastructure out there and that includes Wi-Fi service, working with our private partners on those kind of things. And then we also need to look at where, where are we going to put big box stores in town. So if someday Home Depot rings, rings our phone up at City Hall and says we want to come to Laramie, where are we going to put them? We need to be working towards those things. So that includes extending street and water and sewer infrastructure out so that we have more build-ready sites. Not necessarily okay. uh, built, but build-ready. And we've been told over numerous times uh, in my tenure during City Council that that's probably the big city's biggest challenge in terms to big business growth. Um, and frankly, we're seeing some of our other businesses here in town struggle with finding adequate space because, again, there's not buildable stuff. Where they might be able to be in downtown and they've grown out of that kind of incubator in downtown, they need more space and we just don't have 
a now business ready space open to go. Where are you at in terms of trying to fill some of the vacant buildings? The balance that so this is going to be a, a kind of a tier question filling the vacant buildings because I, I deal with that. I actually converse on that probably more than anything. I mean, there's a lot of vacancies up and down Third Street, downtown, and there's other vacancies on yep. Snowy Range Road on the west side. I'm not going to say west side. I'm going to say on the west side, but there are other vacancies mm -hmm. across town. So let's start there. Where, how, how concerned are you that we can't seem to fill? Or if there are things that fill, it's only seemingly temporary. We can't seem to sustain get those, them. Those yeah, and, and get and, and 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 help them. I guess how do we help them moving forward to to make it more sustainable to to get a better uh, business community here? Absolutely, it would be ideal to be able to repurpose a lot of the space that we already have. I can think of numerous one clicks on Third Street and and a few out on the West Side and in West Laramie that would certainly serve as space. One of the biggest issues is we always kind of think about this in terms of government services and what can we do. Those are all held by private property owners. So our job is really to help and work with the private property owners to try to help them fill those buildings. So that includes things like uh, the city's contract with the retail coach that's, that's fairly new uh, to try to go out and recruit retailers to come into those businesses. Uh, one of the things that I pushed really hard this year and as part of my platform for re-election is pushing entrepreneurship. And it, how do we make those spaces more available at a lower cost to to somebody coming in. So one of the things that I want to look at next year if I'm re-elected is how do we change the development code to make redevelopment of properties? Any of those on Third Street come to mind. Um, how do we make that cost and that entry lower for somebody to come in? So if they're an entrepreneur, they're just starting off, or if they're a small business, and they've got money for their, their product and their employees, but they don't necessarily have a ton of cash to meet the city's development code, how do we help them over that barrier? Do we lengthen that time out to allow them to, you know, hey, the first three years, we want you to go make money, and then in years four and five, we want you to come back and do improvements? Uh, what can we possibly do to okay. help fund those kind of things? I think all of those pieces are important. Um, I think that getting all of the groups to work together, so Main Street and LCBA, uh, the Wyoming Technology Business Center, all of those pieces that are bringing and, and helping to create business here in Laramie, we need to all be on the same page about you know, who we're targeting and how we're helping them so it's not quite so spotty. And I think generally we do a good job most of the time, but I think that that certainly can always use some improvement. Talking with uh, Mayor Somerville but out about her re-election campaign here in 2018, you brought up big box stores. Where is that balance here in a town like ours of big box versus small business? And and yeah. some people would say, since we have a big box out on the east side of town that's taken away some of the local mm -hmm. kind of mom and pop shops, where is that balance in this community, do you feel? Well, frankly, from a community standpoint, from sitting on a city council and mayor's position, I couldn't be happier that we don't have a mall because every city across America that is dealing with a mall right now is dealing with vacant space that is 10 times what we have here in That's Laramie. an interesting point because some yeah. people would disagree with you and say, hey, I want, I want, I want the mall, right? I want the mall. Um, but if you look at the malls, uh, even in some of our sister cities here in Wyoming and down in Colorado, they're really struggling. They, yeah. they're, they're, they're falling apart. Um, and so what we've done, I think, hopefully is strike a good balance. So with our, for example, our contract with the retail coach, their contract is to go recruit retail into the city, and it's not necessarily big box, it's a variety, but their other job is to work with the retailers that we have here to help enhance and help give them better data and better information about what they can sell and what they can't carry to hopefully make, make them a more profitable, profitable business. Small businesses are always going to be the heart of town, and frankly, I think that's what it always should be. Um, I think big box stores in the way that we think of today, you know, the giant Sam's Club, the giant Target, all of those, generally we're seeing those decrease in, in trends. Uh, you know, in the last city conference that I went to, they're showing a steady decrease in the size. I think Target is now doing some kind of a, you know, a small town size Target store that they're piloting. Boy, I love that here. Oh, I know it. I think I know there's it. a lot of people that would love something <laughs> along those lines, you know, a hardware improvement store yeah. that has a yeah. little bit more than so what our local ones have already. Th there's a, I think that there's a, an opening for both, but I think the big box stores are probably going to be fewer and, and targeted as far as what we into town. Okay. We don't want to see a bunch of big box stores because right. we also know that, you know, we've, we've seen what happened with um, 
you know, Sears and Kmart. Those were large corporations that were generally big box stores, and now we're kind of dealing with the leftovers. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's certainly a delicate balance, and obviously, I think the, the business climate has changed, uh, not only here in our community, but across the country. Absolutely. Uh, other big things that you want to get on in terms of your message to voters uh, before I let you go today? Um, you know, just that the, uh, infrastructure and entrepreneurship are the things that, if I had to pick a couple that are really my, my big pushes, um, I do believe that, uh, you know, we're a community of all, and we need to support everybody that's here. Uh, I was a part of the Age Friendly Community Initiative to try to increase our ability for our seniors to be able to get out and have access to stuff, as well as you know, working with the university on more, more, more rec stuff, more uh, stuff for our younger population. And, and then I have to share with you uh, the, the most frequently asked question as I've been going door to door. So they, I've had people say, well, Andy, I don't want you to be on council. I want to vote for you for mayor again. So I've had to explain our local government system here. It's a little bit different than it's other places. It's a little places. less, right. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, a quick explanation here. So we run a council manager form of government here. So the mayor actually comes from an elected council person. So after, you know, we'll know presumably on Wednesday who the council people are. When the council meets as a whole body again in January, the first thing that they will do is elect a mayor from between the nine of them. And then that mayor will serve for two years. Uh, so I'm both a council member and a mayor right now, uh, mm -hmm. as my predecessors before me have been. But that has been the most frequently asked question. Well, and and uh, not everybody. I hate to, um, I hate to bring this up, but not everybody on the council wants to be the mayor either. That's true. That's true. So. I I think it's a I think it's a, been a great experience. Um, I've I've loved getting to go out and talk to people and see the different things in Laramie that are going on that you necessarily wouldn't see otherwise. I think that's been the best part of the job. Well, good luck to you tomorrow. Well, thank you very much.